Sometimes as parents, we do things that our children may not like, but we have to look out for their well-being, and we're not just dealing with the now, but we're looking ahead of time. Because we know our sons, our daughters, they was five at one time, now they seven, now they ten, now they thirteen. So you have to make sure that whole foundation structure is strong. Why? Because that foundation is going to be tested. When do that foundation be tested? I'm so glad you asked. A lot of times it's tested when they go to school. Oh yeah. yeah. The foundation is being tested and they're trying to implement certain things or try to normalize certain lifestyles and try to get your children to fit in to certain circles and certain cliques and even on the adult side they try to get adults to fit in to give in and look like the world and mimic this and mimic that and you move away from all your fi your foundational principles that have you been taught and inundated with and all of a sudden now you start adding other stuff to what you've been taught and now all of a sudden you're building it on something totally different. Mm -hmm. And we have seen story after story that we can read throughout the scripture and we can see where people have deviated from the things of God and started following the ways of man. And this is one of the things that had gotten Israel so messed up even at the time when Moses was selected, the sons amen, they came forth and they wanted, the sons of Korah came forth and they had the audacity to question Moses' leadership and ask him, who put you in charge? And Moses was selected by God. So Moses said, all right, I tell you what, we'll give it a test. We'll find out who God selected. The test was given. We saw who God was selected. And matter of fact, the sons of Korah, God told them to remove yourselves, move away from them. And the Bible said that at the tents that everybody that was in agreement with the sons of Korah, the Bible said he opened up the earth and it swallowed the children of God. Why? Because you're questioning what God has already ordained. Maybe you're not the one to hold the microphone, but maybe you're the one to sing in the choir. Maybe you're not the one to sing in the choir. Maybe you're the one to clean the bathroom. Maybe you're not the one to clean the bathroom. Maybe you're just the one to be the usher. But whatever you are in the kingdom of God, don't look down, don't despise what you're doing because you all are built on the same foundation. You just got different roles. And sometimes we're so busy looking at other things, we're missing what we ought to be doing. Yeah. In the kingdom of God. Woo. Let, me, let me give you a note here. I got a note here. All people are building and all are builders. Choose a foundation. All foundations will be tried. Only the one that will stand the storms of judgment, the storms of testing, the storms of trial and tribulation and circumstance. And that's why like Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, he said, and trust in the Lord yes. with all thy heart. That's completeness. And lean not to thy own understanding. See, we can get caught up in our own frailty, in our own, amen, IQ levels and how we think and how we articulate. But we got to remember, God is the one that gives us the brain and he's not intimidated by us thinking. But sometimes God want to do something different and we have to go back to the God we serve and ask God, how do I handle this situation and this circumstance? And one thing that caused so many Christians to miss what God has from them is because they are too inconsistent yes. oh, and uncommitted. Yeah. We committed to a point, we consistent to a point, but when you be like that water pecking on the rock, mm -hmm. uh -huh. do you know how water make an impression on the rock or make a stain as they call it on the rock? Because it just keeps dripping, yeah. dripping, yeah. And dripping, and dripping. You ever seen water dripping in your tub? You didn't know it was dripping until you got the light bill and you realize, and they said you got a, you got a leak somewhere. And you realize, you turn it off as tight as you could, but it, it's going to require a plumber, amen, to, to re either fix it or fix the nozzle or, or fix it where it can it turn off and it shut completely off. And you wonder why your, your bill is so high, amen, in the wintertime, and it's because it's a drip. Yeah. And if it drip long enough, it'll put a stain in the tub, yeah. and then you got to go in there and clean it with some cotton, some bleach, and get that stain out, you got to scrub it real good, amen. But, if, but the water makes the impression because it's consistent. Mm -hmm. It just keeps dropping. And drop it, and drop it, and drop it, and drop it until it makes an impression in the tub. And he said, "Oh Lord, we gotta go get this water stain out this tub." Uh -huh. Same thing with Asa. The Bible says in, in the Book of Chronicles, Asa, Amen. He did everything that was pleasing to God. 
But then all of a sudden, as soon as he got sick in his body, the Bible said Asa was diseased in his foot. But he's consulted the physicians hey. instead of the God. So he ended up dying, but not because of the, the fact of what he did. But if he would have consulted God first, sometimes we put God first in the journey ah. until we get to a certain place in life where we got multiple physicians. We got nine doctors that we can dispatch. We got cars and this and that that we can dispatch. And then all of a sudden, as soon as we blow up, as soon as we come into our, 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 our ship, as we call it, as soon as we make it, as soon as we get six figures, as soon as we live it good, eat good, all of a sudden now we just ride by the church. But you were so in the church when you needed a breakthrough. You was in the church when you had cancer. You was in the church when you needed a job. You was in the church when you were sick. You was in the church when you were broke. And all you had was a half a tank of gas. And you know you didn't get paid until two weeks. And all you had was $50 in your food stamp card. Oh, you was in church then. But soon as you don't need food stamp no more. Soon as you get the raise, you get the position. Then all of a sudden now, we done got too smart that we don't need church. No, yeah. you need God on every step yes. of this journey. Yes. You don't need God just because you're doing good. You need God when you're doing good, when you're doing bad, when you're doing in between. Come on, some, just one thing I like about Job. Job said this. He told his wife. He said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Yes. But I like how he ended it because he just didn't look on his circumstance. He said, blessed be uh -huh. the name of the Lord. Yes. If you're serving God for stuff, yes. sooner or later you're going to fall out of the race. I'm going to go and tell you now. So if you're serving God for stuff, you might as well hold your finger and walk on out the door. Because God is not going to be a bellhop to you. God is not going to be a genie to you. You just ain't going to just rub on this God and expect for him to do what you want him to do it when he wants you to do it. No, it don't work that way. A solid foundation. A solid foundation just don't stand when it rains. The rains of life. The systemic evils of life. A solid foundation stand beyond the rain, beyond circumstances, beyond situations. When people talk about giving up, that solid foundation still stand. When, when you're facing disparities and marginalization and all types of stuff you go through because of who you are as a person and what your ethnicity is, your foundation still stands. When you have been picked over, looked under, and looked across, cross eye and roll eye, roll that cussed eye, cussed up, cussed to the side, but yet it's still, you still stand because your foundation is strong. getting hooked on drugs and hooked on funnies and hooked on a whole lot of other stuff that was hooked on. But yet and still they look at you and they can't understand why you still living and your bills ain't man and just in waving distance. They ain't even meeting. But yet and still you're getting big. You're, you're gaining weight. You're doing good. Amen. So reason why is because what you built on. Yes, Lord. And the charity starts. At home. Yes, sir. Let me just say this. Let me just say this as I, I as I hasten on. Just give me about 15 more minutes. Just because many don't believe yeah. in the Bible, they want to think that the Bible truths don't affect them. Yeah. See, whatever the Bible says is gonna happen. Mm -hmm. It's gonna happen. Yes. Regardless. People think, oh, I don't believe in this, oh, I'm gonna be excluded from that stuff. No, you're not. No, you're not. When the Bible says for the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life, that's all. That'll affect everybody. The wages of sin is death. Sin want to get paid. So if you live an immoral lifestyle, you can expect to receive the recompense of that lifestyle. Whether you open your Bible, close your Bible, don't make no difference how you want to do the Bible. You can put it on this table. You can put it over here. You can put it over there. Don't make no difference. You say, I ain't on my Bible. I ain't got to live by it. Well, you may not live by it, but you're still affected by it. Because at the end of the day, God still reigns supreme, and he has all power. 